Welcome to the AWP University. A construction industry institute, registered education provider. All right. Hello and welcome to the AWP University. So this will be this will be our first webinar um, in our 2024 season. Uh, 2023 season was highly successful. Um, through our five webinars that we had in the 2023 uh, season, we had nearly uh, 4,000 attendees throughout those webinars. Uh, we brought you everything from best practices around the uh, AWP curriculum. We brought you everything from uh, the path of construction through to modern uh, motivations and technology, as well as discussing um, some of the benefits of use cases uh, such as AWP and Lean and how those work together. Uh, in the 2024 season, we plan to build on a lot of those topics and a lot of things that we've covered in the past, as well as bringing new and exciting stuff. Uh, to kick off this 2024 season, we are going to present, and very proud to be presenting, our brand new AWP curriculum. Uh, the AWPU uh, curriculum has been completely reworked, and we'll get into the methodologies in which we use to further the AWP curriculum to where it is today to what we believe and have uh, and understand to be the most uh, successful and most advanced uh, training for AWP in the industry, um, as well as the only CII registered educational provider that's solely dedicated to the delivery of uh, AWP methodologies and certification. So with that, um, we will jump into our uh, Meet the New AWP University curriculum webinar for today. Um, and I will do a quick introduction of myself as we move forward. Um, my name is Robin Mickelson. I am the president of the AWP University. Um, a little bit about my background. My background is that uh, um, I'm about 30 years in construction. Uh, I've been working in construction productivity methodologies now going on about 25 years. Um, with my background, both from my time as a fitter in the field, as well as the engineering office, um, I come from uh, an understanding from both sides um, and through construction productivity, um, I've used that as a lever to express myself and express the methodologies around AWP moving forward. After forming the AWP University, um, we've trained um, many thousands of students and certified many. Uh, we deal with the largest um, organizations in the world, the largest constructors. Um, and not just um, oil and gas sectors, but everything from renewable industries, such as uh, battery production, such as wind and solar, um, uh, automotive manufacturing. We also deal with the uh, construction of um, everything from airports through to um, data centers um, that we work on and consult. My background is com I've consulted on over 150 major industrial projects um, across a great bandwidth of uh, of different utilities and different uh, commodities over the years. And uh, through the AWP University, we're hoping to continue to help uh, bringing forward the AWP methodology um, across uh, the globe, as AWP is now global. Um, so I'm pleased to enter, um, to also have um, our newest member of the team, Andre, with us, who's going to, um, take us through some of our learnings today. I will um, turn the mic over to Andre momentarily so that Andre can introduce himself. Go ahead, Mr. Prowse. Hey, how are you doing, everybody? I'm the newest AWP advisor, joined Robin's team late last year. Um, I have a little over 15 years experience in the industrial and EPC space, a um, little over 10 years in the aspect of design and engineering, uh, 3D modeling, piping, physical structural, and field construction execution. The last five or six years, I joined the construction technology space, working for various ADP technology solutions. That's how I met Robin, um, kind of met through the industry, having some of our clients take some of his training. And then now I've joined his team to kind of enhance his journey, the, um, kind of teaching the ADP methodology across various industries. Um, specialized in oil and gas for over 10 years, but also this infrastructure and AEC space as well, which is now starting to join the AWP space more and more each year. So based out of Houston, Texas, and uh, looking forward to working with this team. All right, thanks, Andre. And uh, we will hear more from Andre here uh, later as he takes us through some of our, our new developments around corporate offerings, uh, which is pretty exciting. 
So let's jump in. Uh, one of the first things that I want to discuss is we are going to use Slido here today. Um, in a webinar, we don't have open mics from all of our attendees, but we really, really want to hear from all of you out there. Um, questions about the new curriculum, questions about AWP in general, whatever um, you choose to ask um, as we move forward. To do that, we're going to use Slido to capture those questions. So please uh, either scan the QR code with your device or on your laptop, uh, sign in or log in to slido.com. And when it asks you for the uh, the number for the um, the session, it's AWPU7. All right, so that is uh, how you get a lot of questions across to us in the last uh, several minutes of our presentations today in the webinar. Uh, we'll come back and we will discuss uh, the questions moving forward, both Andre and myself. Um, all right, so keep them coming. We look forward to um, going over those questions. All right, so moving forward, uh, just to prime the wheels a little bit, let's uh, do a quick survey to find out who we've got in our audience today. Uh, we've got lots of people in attendance here. Um, log into the system and uh, start answering the uh, owner, EPC, constructor, vendor, or just looking for an opportunity. Uh, looking for an opportunity is important. We are very um, driven on creating a community through the COPs, the Community of Practices on LinkedIn, as well as um, the AWP University website and our new job board that I'm going to show you later to give our uh, individuals, our students, a option to move forward um, and uh, examine the different opportunities in the industry. So if you're looking for an opportunity, that's great. And this will stay open so that you can continue to, to answer that. Uh, for some reason, I guess the results are not showing. Slido has been a little finicky. So if we do have some problems with logging the questions, I, uh, I'm very sorry. Slido has been having some crashing of their UL, URLs issues. But um, we're going to move forward and, and uh, continue to, to get into the new curriculum. So. First thing I want to do is position how we went over, as I mentioned, the new development around the curriculum and how we um, started to rework the, the beloved first issue of the curriculum that ran for nearly three years. Um, don't worry, a lot of that information, a lot of the, the lectures, everything is all still available. But now we have moved to a much more state-of-the-art type um, micro-learning environment. So what is micro-learning? So micro-learning is the ability to um, convey topics in a very quick and efficient manner um, through means of quick hit methodologies. Um, we'll cover a few of these different types of methodologies, but they're, they're, they help you on what you need to know right now. Uh, the they're 10 minutes or less. All of our lessons within the AWP University, uh, we've tried to maintain and mandate that they are all under 10 minutes and they average in the, in the five to seven minute range um, in order to engage the learner, teach them what they need to learn, um, practice those learning activities through certain basic um, concepts and skill developments, and uh, then move on to the next topics to continue with those learning abilities. Um, in that, through micro learning, typical means of micro learning activities such as videos, uh, text, articles, modules, learning games, there's a lot of gamification in our new curriculum. Um, so rather than a multiple choice um, Q&A at the end of every lesson, we now have exercises such as drag and drops and matches and um, graphical interface gamification to do those knowledge checks and help to ensure that the, the information that was covered in the previous lesson is actually very easily retained through some of the different methodologies of, of monitoring through the gamification and other. Um, easily searchable, we have a large index of microlearning activities um, that you can go and take those quick hit microlearnings if you choose. The other thing is, is that we still offer, um, as I mentioned, some of the older macro learning basis. But that's in addition to giving our learners the ability to have those quick learning activities. Um, so what's the difference between micro learning and macro learning? Macro learning is typically how you would have seen your old school classroom type course um, environments. Um, you know, a lot of what we took in university, those types of, of aspects are all a macro learning type basis. There's a lot of context. There's a lot of 
um, I don't want to say fluff, but there's a lot of additional discussion around the specific activities where a micro learning in environment drives directly to the point um, to give that information that's required for that particular topic of learning. Okay, now we do offer both micro and macro learning basis. Our curriculum now in the e-learning aspect drives towards the micro learning basis. Um, as far as the macro learning, we still do in-person training as well as um, offer lecture-based materials um, with, our, with all of our materials so that we have multiple different methods for our students to learn um, the, the materials that, uh, that they're being asked to, to retain. All right, so why did we take this approach? Well, first off, the classroom looks very different today than it once did. Um, COVID had a large hand in changing how people learn or pe how people choose to learn. Um, most people choose to learn on quick hit environments like mi micro learning, um, where it's viewing a quick video on your phone, taking the, the time for a coffee break to visit a YouTube video. How many times have you wanted to do something in your garage, you're gardening, you're working on your car, you're, you're doing tasks around the house, and in order to get that DIY information, the quick hit micro learning type information, you'll go to YouTube, search it, and quickly learn about that particular activity. Well, that's kind of how we've structured the AWP University um, from our position of the micro learning, as well as taking all of those micro learnings and then turning them into our new curriculum so that we align them per student, per role, and we'll talk about the role-based here right away because we're pretty excited about further driving our role-based methodologies forward um, within the AWP University. So we have a YouTube channel as well for you to go and view lots of free learnings that are on the, our YouTube channel. There's a lot of great tools there for uh, sharing within your organization, such as the AWP to me, um, which is a six minute video, <clears throat> excuse me, of everything AWP. Real good introduction. You're not gonna be able to build a package from viewing that particular video, but you're going to be able to convey what AWP's purpose is and what it's actually for. Um, that resource is, is great to use, and that's a micro-learning type resource. Now, as I mentioned, the classroom has changed. <coughs> Excuse me, we've tried to enable how people learn today, and in this busy world, as far as when you actually have opportunities to learn, whether it's on the train or the bus home, um, from the office, now that most of us are all back in the offices, um, it's important to be able to pick up something, learn something quick, and put it down. Um, so that it's non-intrusive. Even our in-person um, practical methodologies that we're going to talk about later are now delivered through a methodology that, that allows for students to review um, and go over certain aspects really quickly from either remote devices or be able to, to review it and view it from anywhere in the world at any time. So e-learning has really taken off in the last little while, but what does e-learning actually mean? So it's not just the micro learning, it's not just the macro learning, it's how it's presented and the tools that are given to you as a student or as an owner who has students that you need to have trained, um, drive forward in the industry and, and become successful. So some of these tools in our brand new platform that's up and running, it's, um, we're gonna give you a tour of it here today but along with our new curriculum. Um, some of the new things that we've done, such things as, of course, through the e-learning environment, it's all flexible. Um, you can learn when you want, how you want, from where you want, um, not requiring specific times or logins at any interval to, to be able to catch a class that they're a quick lecture. Everything is available for you online to learn, excuse me, right down to certificate uh, validation and delivery. Um, once you've uh, achieved the, the completion of certain learning paths, you'll automatically be awarded your certificates for download and delivery. Uh, we now have an extensive amount of practical exercise and learning act activities. Um, Andre's gonna talk about the practical exercise delivery here in the near future. Our modules and our comprehensive modules have been driven forward through grouping our micro learning activities. Our entire platform is comprised of about 280 different lessons. Don't worry, not every student has to take all 280 lessons. We've curated those lessons into learning paths so that those modules are comprehensive for the purposes of those learnings. So 
not only have we broke it down into micro learning, but then we've grouped those micro learning activities so that you can learn in bits and pieces towards an end goal of becoming such things as, as very proficient in your role as an AWP um, mentor, as an AWP champion, as an AWP coordinator, those types of roles and the things that you need to know for those positions. We've curated them into those, those bases. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a bit of a cold. Uh, custom branding, we will, we can do white labeling for, for um, all of our materials for your corporate requirements. We have full student dashboarding now, both for the individual student to track their own learning objectives, track what they've learned, what percentages they're at, and we'll look at these in the near future here, but we've also created now a full corporate dashboard um, that I'm gonna show you so that you can actually, as a corporate organization, monitor your students' activities within our systems, which is very, very key, and view those detailed metrics on all of those. Uh, full certificate management for that so that you can view who's who's been awarded credentials and who has not. Um, we've got full support for um, our corporate clients and, the, and from both the educator and the live Q&A sessions that we hold. Um, stay tuned for those. Uh, Role-based training is where we really hang our hat. Um, there's a lot of training in the industry. There's bit piece training. There's a lot of overview training. Um, there's a lot of AWP drink from the fire hose. But we're the only ones that break it into what you need to know as an individual in a role specific to um, what it is that you're responsible for um, as a member of a proficient AWP team. Uh, there's full examination control within the system and career path controls and live streaming. The career path controls are important to be able to identify adding courses to your wish list or adding courses into your system so that you can see what your learning environment looks like, what you need to learn both from a private individual basis as well as from a corporate learning and assigned learning activities point of view. Um, so that's a quick overview of a lot of the things that we've improved and gone forward with in the, in the site. Now let's talk about the basis of, <coughs> excuse me, our actual um, certification process and how we actually group all of that micro learning together to create these functional programs that we were talking about before. We, our certification is based on three basic levels. Um, level one, which is basically introductory courses. So the level one, there's four base level ones that are positioned to AWP and engineering. So if you're an engineer or an engineering group or part of an engineering group, that's the level one that you would start with. Workface planning, fundamentals. Very key for those that are in a construction execution type basis, EPC companies, constructors, subcontractors, those types of things. The AWP fundamentals, which is the, the flagship, which is the basic biggest overview of all things AWP um, and how to set it up in the basis. It doesn't get into the real nitty gritties of say how to build a package, but about what every package is and what you need them for and how they interact and what their phasing is through their different projects. So <clears throat> with those three basic level ones, then we've got a, a, set, a fourth level one, which is a primer. That's for all those real quick hit courses. If you've got an executive that needs to, to understand what AWP is, they don't wanna be spending days in training. So through four or five hours, they can go through the primer into um, much, better, much more key role-based learnings to them. So that's our level ones, the introductory basis. Level twos is about what is specific to um, the individuals and, and the role based and then and the best practices associated with those. So all of the best practice learnings, um, what how C, CWPs and IWPs interact, how the different work packages all tie together, those types of things, the AWP best practices as shown by CII and others in the industries fall into the level two. The level three is truly the role-based, what does this mean to me? If I'm an, a, I'm an AWP coordinator, what do I have to do? Who do I have to talk to? What are my deliverables? How does this go out there? We believe at the AWP University that we want to create functional practitioners. What that means is that we create an environment of learning so that people can answer the question, okay, yeah, but what does AWP mean to me? That is extremely important. There's lots of learnings, lots of literature in the industry, but applying that functionally to a role, to a job, 
is the difficult chasm that we try to cross in teaching within the AWP University. It's unique to us, and I think it gives our students the edge um, over all other forms of learning within the industry. So let's look at those available different roles as we go through it. Of course, our, our typical three most popular um, and that are kind of prolific within the industry in general um, are the AWP coordinator um, and what that means for uh, everything associated with the AWP program for that coordinator to help push forward and move forward with. The AWP champion, if you're responsible for the AWP program, what is it you need to know in order to be effective in hiring, setting up a program, and effectively mentoring others for that program. It's one of our more expensive, extensive trainings, um, but it's positioned at understanding a little bit of all of it, um, which is very key to ensure that you create individuals as champions that can help guide a program forward successfully. And then, of course, there's the Workface Planner certification, which is very, very key if you are actually building packages at the work face and how the life cycle of the IWPs work, how that ties into the issuance, monitoring, maintenance, reviewing of the IWPs, and of course, closeout handoff and sequencing of, of future IWPs. Everything from development of an IWP work release or release plan all the way through to um, the, in, <coughs> the individual uh, production controls of the items and tasks within an IWP for execution during that time frame. Very key um, in those. Now, those are, of course, the three most popular and typical, but we take it a step further than that. We believe that that's a good foundation um, and good overview, but when it really comes into those that make the systems work in projects, um, we have these 12, 12 learning paths to accompany the three uh, major for a total of 15 different learning paths associated with this. In a corporate basis, we have the ability to very quickly and easily create custom learning paths for your corporate environment. Reach out to Andre and myself. We can walk the corporate engagements through the basis of those. Very interesting, very key on very quickly and easily being able to satisfy and create um, custom materials for your corporate environments. Um, these can be taken at any time within our learning management system, our LMS, our brand new custom LMS that we're going to show you here right away. Uh, we have developed a state-of-the-art LMS system. We spent nearly two years reviewing different off-the-shelf systems, different methods of delivering these trainings, um, went to many conferences, spent weeks on the road looking at um, different e-learning platforms. What we came to the consensus for was for AWP, we needed to develop our own. We kind of took the best a breed from everything that we could find in the industry, put it together into a single platform that we're very proud to be showing you here today, along with our new curriculum. So you'll hear me speak to the curriculum and you'll also hear me speak to our new platform options as they move forward um, to help give a much more holistic environment, easy to navigate and advanced delivery of um, highly interactive training moving forward um, for each of these positions. The idea is we want it to be as effective as possible, get you in, get you out, certified, knowing what you need to do in your positions. We never want to have a student leave our, our um, university after graduation and be wondering, okay, now I got an understanding of what it is, but what does that mean to me in my position? We want them to hit the ground running, understanding exactly what it is that they, they need to do in their job and roles, which is why we've created all of these specific learning paths. So with that, with those key learning paths, let's have a look at um, the new website. <coughs> so when you go to our URL, uh, several URLs will take you to the central page, which is the, the basic lock-in and landing page, um, whether it's awp-u.com, uh, ccteglobal.com, and if you're wondering what CCTE Global is, that's the AWP University Parrot Company. We are part of the Center for Construction Training Excellence. Um, and if you scroll down on this oops, on this lead page, you'll see certain things that help to identify some of the places that we're going, such as some BIM, Agile, and Lean principles. Uh, we'll be releasing in the near future 
um, a lot more training around some of these areas, as well as AWP and Lean and how it works together. We're very excited to be releasing that one in the coming months, so stay tuned. Uh, we'll probably bring that into a future webinar to talk about AWP and Lean moving forward. Very key in the industry, AWP and Lean has identified that we have a great symbiotic relationship. There's been great development in CII um, by groups ran by John Strickland and Fernando Espana in CII on how AWP and CII are truly complementary to each other and not competitive. Um, we have many training courses coming on exactly that and how to implement that and how to take the best of breed for your best solutions. Um, no one solution is a catch-all for everything. So we at the AWP University are focused on making sure that you get the best bang for your buck um, in the basis of, of these uh, different environments. So let's take a look at the, um, the different pages within the university so we can show you how to navigate them and the different areas within it. The welcome page and our home page here um, takes you through some of the basics talking about um, what it is AWP is, where the AWP University came from, a lot of the features that we just uh, discussed um, before coming in here, some testimonials, articles um, for you to read as well. If we go to the bottom here, sort of the articles here, right? And that's just the lead page. Once you go into the About Us page or the About Us tab, uh, certain things like where did AWP um, university come from, our story, how it was invented and brought forward and incorporated, who our instructors are, very key um, learnings as to the individuals that we work with and the development uh, of our training materials, very key individuals. Um, AWP in the industry, this is an important aspect of our new website. This gives you a lot of free materials. As mentioned, this is our second season for the AWP webinars. All of our AWP webinars are either, either available here in the AWP in the industry tab or serve directly on our AWP uh, YouTube page. So if you miss or have come in late for this or others um, later after the, um, the registrations have, have subsided, we will move it to the YouTube side and uh, you'll be able to, to review and come back and say, what did he say about that particular learning path? Those types of things you can come in here as well as a lot of different presentations I've done in the industry. Um, some of this was a webinar that was done with John, John Strickland and um, Fernando Espana that I was talking about for AWP and Lean earlier. Modularization discussions, enhancing AWP with modularization, talking further about uh, the webinar series and um, what you need to know about AWP education. There's many, many different different uh, discussions and speaks, everything, everything from speaking engagements at, con at conferences um, to training seminars that, that have been recorded and put up here. This is all free of charge um, and is a great resource um, for all of our students. Now, one thing that I want to show you here that's, that's extremely important also is our new job board. Um, it is brand new. We've just released it, so we don't have any anything really other than a few tests in there directly. Um, but we have a full uh, job board that's coming forward. We've got a couple requirements uh, or a couple jobs in there that are posted for um, uh, looking for certain positions. Whether you want to post a job or you have signed in as a corporate learner, I'm not going to take you through all how all that looks, but reach out to us. As a corporate organization that's looking for individuals, we can help set you up um, with our students and others to, to guide you for those individuals that are trained and certified that are looking for work. Um, as we populate this over the, over the coming time, um, we will have a lot more of our students, any of our students that are looking for work or new engagements, um, maybe the present contract or under is coming to an end, they will be posted here. This is extremely, um, leveraging of anything that's specific to the AWP world and looking for workplace planners, AWP coordinators moving forward. We felt that we needed to be a center for these individuals that are that are looking for that, that hand up and to connect them with the right individuals. We on average probably get two to three calls a week from students or other individuals asking about where can I find um, job listings? Who can I talk to about a position with different organizations? So we decided to bring that forward into our platform to ensure that we drove it forward so that it was a very interactive and easy tool for our students and um, 
our owner representatives to be able to use. But let's look here at um, our program. If you go into the program tab, there are a couple different ways to view our learning activities. One is by role, and we'll go into there right away. The other is by level through those level ones, twos, and threes. So all the level ones, all the level twos, and all the level threes are all grouped together so that you can see the different offerings. And then of course the micro learning uh, library, which is real quick hit lessons that you can buy individually. Say you just wanna brush up on something like uh, procurement requirements for AWP. What does it mean for procurement lead in, in AWP? Maybe you just wanna go take a quick course on that instead of doing a full certification learning path. Then you can go in, take a quick half an hour um, and learn immediately through our micro learning library. Our micro learning library is very extensive. Um, and many of the lessons that are in the micro learning all roll up to different learning objectives and learning paths. So if you do take some of the, the micro learning quick, quick hit um, basic uh, courses, such things as you know, project setup, interactive planning, some of these, and then later you decide to do a full certification or a full learning path within the AWP University, you will be credited for these courses that, that facilitate or fit within that particular learning path, if they're associated with that learning path. So that's very key that you can do bit and piece learning or actually go in and go through um, a full learning path by role, which is guided to help you with your career orientation for everything such as AWP champions and 14 others than the AWP champion as we go forward. It's very important that we look at how the different uh, different uh, roles work together and how each of them. When you go into each of these, if you click on the enroll now or the icon itself, to go in here, what it'll take you to is a page that talks extensively about what you get in each of these learning paths. Every lesson, every micro learning lesson, every learning path has these specific um, descriptions that shows you what you're gonna learn, who it's for, what the basis of, of this is intended to give you a little bit about the development of it. <clears throat> also, what's inside, what to expect in this particular learning path, the, the AWP champion through to level three is 14 hours of instruction. In here, what's included in the level one, you can see all of the lessons here. If you click on them, it will give you a full detail of what that lesson is and then payment information so that you can directly go into that, the level two information. So all of these are extremely detailed so you know what you're getting into and if this is the right fit for you moving forward, which is very, very key. Um, we wanna make sure that the learning that you embark on is specific to your requirements and your goal um, as a learner when you, go, when you go forward. Okay, now with that <clears throat> and the micro learning library and our roles, We've got an extensive amount of learning paths and activities for students to, to learn. There's two ways that we typically deal with um, training our students. One is of course through direct engagement with our site. At any time, any student can come, enroll through our website, uh, pay for their courses, take their learnings, get their credentials, pass their exams, um, go through all of that, join our communities and go through and understand what it is in an individual basis level. We also have a full corporate enablement program for our corporate offerings. We have special corporate offerings for different individuals, and we have um, a, a full engagement staff and management for those corporate uh, individuals so that when we work with an organization that might have three, 400, 500 students, uh, we work with the biggest companies in the world presently. Um, everyone from, well, I won't mention names, the largest organizations out there um, that are very key to utilizing AWP. We're very flattered to be trusted by the best um, organizations in the world. Everybody from uh, uh, different uh, companies that are the major deliverers of alternative fuels through to oil and gas, as well as petrochemicals and, and uh, alternative fuels. Um, our training goes across all of those chasms. But in that corporate environment, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it over to um, Andre, and I'm gonna let Andre take us through our corporate solutions portal. Um, he's gonna give us the quick um, updates on what it is that, that we offer in our corporate services. 
and take us through the, this environment. Andre? Yeah, do you want to go to the page for the corporate pricing and discount subscriptions? Yeah, we're going to run it through there. So, like Robin has displayed, obviously, when you go online, we have everything that's role based and level based pricing online, but we also do corporate solutions as well. So, corporate pricing and discounts starts once we get, get an agreement with the company we're working with, and we have over 10 users. And once we reach that amount, then we roughly give roughly about a 30% discount over the pricing that we offer. But in addition to that is you'll get a corporate dashboard to actually review your student, um, your metrics. You know, you can see who's enrolled, how much they've progressed and kind of set deadlines for yourself internally to kind of keep track of where your your students are in their role based training. And then you also get exam control as well. So you can actually uh, select career paths for your students to enroll in and keep metrics of all that and then be reported back to you. Um, in addition to that dashboard that um, Robin will show a little bit later, we also offer subscription and enterprise-wide training and awareness. So if there's a company that's kind of barely starting off their AWP journey, a lot of times they want to train the whole project organization, um, whether it be corporate-wide or project-based, and they may just enroll the whole team in the AWP fundamentals course across that organization. So we offer that in a subscription yearly based amount as well. So depending on the size of the organization, size of the group, we sit down with you, we work about the initiatives as to what that group wants to achieve, and we put together a custom subscription-based pricing for that. A lot of a bit larger EPCs and owners that we work with, they have various projects, various directors and project managers across the world, and they want to bring them up to speed, whether it be for advanced work packaging awareness as a whole, or pushing some of their ADP champions further with their training. Um, in those regards, we kind of provide a hybrid model. Um, we have token-based subscriptions, um, enterprise-wide. So a lot of times, our, one of our, some of our larger clients, they'll do like the ADP, ADP fundamentals course for everyone on the project team, and then they'll select some custom role-based training for some people to be ADP champions, coordinators, or they may see that the construction crew that they hired or subcontract to may not have a lot of AWP awareness. They will enroll then that contractor in the work-based planning uh, role-based training that we offer. So it provides a very, the token-based subscription um, provides a very flexible way of being able to utilize the software on demand without having to have to constantly have the administrative work of potentially cutting a purchase order or coming to us every time with a, a quote of how many, how much would it cost for a licensing for this as a project or this many role of users levels. We just give you an, a token amount base and then you get a report from us every month letting you know who enrolled, how far they along they are and how much you have left in your token based subscription. So that's how our corporate pricing uh, discounts and subscriptions work. Um, another offering that we have, uh, to scroll down a little bit, Robin, on that page, is our 80-20 uh, corporate curriculum customization. So everything we do, obviously, we are a CII registered education provider. So we create a training program that's 80% aligned with the industry best practices, right? And then we grab your your workflows and also your eight workplace planning, your ADP processes in place that we, that we have in place. And then we address your specific challenging goals of where you can improve on. So we can custom tailor our training modules that are all, that we, he showed you off the shelf that are you know, either level based or role based. But we grab those modules and then we adhere them or modify them to adhere to your work face planning and AWP workflows that you already have in place or just a standard practice within your organization. Uh, if need be, we can actually custom deliver these in a SCORN file that could be hosted to your LMS system as well. So your company XYZ, you actually want to deliver to this training to internally or externally to your contractors. We can have your company label on there. We deliver the scoring file to, to you and then you can host it on your own LMS system so you have more control over that. And that's something we discuss a lot with a lot of the IT uh, developers as well. Um, one thing to do is since me and Robin are both involved in quite a few of the CI research groups and he sits on the committee board, um, we can also do a consultation with the 8020 corporate curriculum. We can aid you in kind of modifying your workplace planning ADP processes to adhere to the newest CI standards that are being developed obviously every year. As we know, um, CI has obviously revolving research panels all the time. We're releasing new results. Um, some of the newest ones that have been released is the Digital Threads Research Group Initiative, um, which is a really good research paper. Uh, if you dig through, I think it's 270 pages. We can help you digest that to see how you can best aid your team to make sure you have the data transfer from engineering to procurement or at construction. And then if, you, if the scope of work is construction only, um, we kind of can show you how to ask for that 
information from your contractor to receive so that you can better execute your AWP processes. Um, another research group is Lean, Lean plus AWP best practices. Um, all our all our tutorials that we have, all our core uh, core uh, modules we have, they all incorporate Lean into that as well. So we can uh, kind of put that best age your custom corporate curriculum. Another thing that we also do is I come from a construction technology background. I've been doing it for about five, six years, stood up various ADVP solutions for various companies. So since part of the 8020 curriculum is actually reviewing your digital tools that you already have in place to execute your advanced work packaging. And then we can make custom programs to adhere to that and also show you how to link and actually transfer that data from your ERP and legacy systems in place that are gonna be utilized with that AWP software. So we kind of can build like a BIM VDC implementation plan along with your training. And that's by reviewing your digital tools and then your current AWP workflow processes that are already in place. So uh, the last thing that we also offer are practical exercises. This is very useful. Um, what we're gonna do here with the practical exercises, it's on site, we actually grab your team. It's a very intensive, hands-on session. It, it utilizes real life project data. Um, the, mo the model and the data were actually from a real life project. We stripped it of proprietary information, obviously, but this is what we use to ensure that everything that we have trained your, your company on, the training that they've received, we actually sit down with them, go through a complete real life application with complex concepts and strategies. We actually go from the very beginning from actually creating the scope of path of construction from you know the very beginning of FAL one all the way to building and executing IWPs to actually construction boots on the ground and then even commissioning and startup as well. So every and these practicals just to be agnostic obviously um, you don't need any other special programs or software. We use um, all the Microsoft standard tools. So we actually use Microsoft Project. Um, we don't so no need so anyone have a deep understanding of Primavera. Uh, it's all Microsoft tools, Excel, just to manipulate data. Since we're actually just trying to teach you the AWP principles and training that we've uh, d delivered to you, that's those are the tools we use. And that's those practicals we only offer in a corporate offering. Um, another thing to add is also all the training that Robin has mentioned, um, whether it be level-based or role-based. In a, in a corporate offering, we actually can deliver that in person as well. If necessary, we do have advanced work project SMEs all across the globe. So we actually go on site and actually deliver the practical exercises or the 8020 corporate curriculum to your team on site as well. So that's good. those are the corporate offerings that we offer currently at AWP University. Robin, do you want to go to the dashboard? Yeah, thank you very much, Andre. So with that, let's uh, jump into uh, the corporate dashboard so that we can take a look at some of the tools that we offer our corporate clients uh, to be able to monitor their students. We make it very, very easy. So if you've purchased as a corporation more than 10 licenses, you get access to a free corporate dashboard. So whoever your lead is, whoever your management manager is or HR department that's in, in charge of monitoring and maintaining the learning activities of the students, um, they would get the, a login that brings them into this page, which is the corporate learning portal. Within that, of course, it starts with a welcome video that's a training mm -hmm. video on everything that's in there to show you how to utilize it so that you understand how to navigate it as the, as the manager to, to get your reports and check on things. Uh, you know, gone are the days of having to, you know, call us and ask for a report or get a weekly report on how your students are doing. At any time in real time, you can come into our platform now, view the statistics of those. So let's let's look at some of this progress tracking um, and click on um, the basis for this particular user. I'm going to log in here in my test account. Okay, <clears throat> go into the corporate dashboard. Click on the real-time progressing, and we'll bring up and look at some of the reporting abilities that you can come in here and quickly see how your students are doing. Um, once this loads and comes up, and you see you'll get a quick recent activity report across the top of what's happening, um, different news and activities within the system to show you what's happening uh, with your students. If we go back here, I'll open the reporting made simple tab so that you can actually go in and see how you can run different reports, show you what recent activities are are in here, what the different students are doing, um, what the 
prolific courses, how they're actually uh, performing, what courses have been finished and what are actually underway. You can click into these ones and see what student has actually completed those courses. Look at each student um, from the point of view of what they're working on um, and see the details against what that student is doing so that you can see what they've passed, what they've completed. Uh, gives you a full reporting structure without getting into all of the independent functions of everything that you've got access to as an organization to track what, what the time to complete is, what the percentage complete, whether they just need to write their exam, what position that student is in, as well as um, assign um, <clears throat> different courses to different students moving forward um, through a, a basic token program that we put in place that if you contact us, we can tell you more about. Um, it's like subscription-based learning. It's very, very easy to, to utilize. The other thing that we give for um, the management that's very, very key is you as a manager or you as an organization wants to know what your student, what your students are learning. So when we click here in the actual corporate dashboard, it brings you to your account and what you have access to as an organization. And this allows you to audit each one of these courses. Now, by auditing, you can go through and see what the content of the course is. Take the course as if you're a student. You're able to fast forward and go through it. Unlike a student that needs to complete the courses in a certain amount of clicks and reviews, and they have to be participants in it, as the auditor, you can go through and click through quickly so that you can see the content. You don't have to write the exams, those kinds of things, but it's it's just like auditing a university class. You're exactly doing that. You're auditing the AWP university classes to come in here and view um, what the content of these are um, so that you understand what your learners are, are getting, what they're learning, and what each of these different sections are, are all about. Where is this very useful? This can be very, very useful in certain things around um, if you've got a problem in a certain basis and your organization wants to hone in on a certain level, your manager, um, your your um, whoever your, your main lead is can come in here, identify which lesson might be the one that's best to review so that you can assign your students and in your organization that particular lesson to review to help overcome that potential issue that you may be dealing with. Very powerful tool um, for our corporate engagement uh, portfolios. Before you just, you kind of en enrolled your students and hope for the best. Now you have full tools to be able to come in here, audit, view, track the students, see exactly what those students are doing at any time in these different reports and these profiles. Be able to come in here, start running reports at will yourself and custom do these different reports. Go in and look at what the quizzes are looking like. Uh, go at the user report and identify who's been doing what in what course. See what courses are, being, are actually being executed and are popular and being completed, which ones are possibly dragging. Who you need to speak to that hasn't started this um, hasn't started it yet. Looks like Ashley and Krista haven't started this learning yet. So you need you can go in and see and identify what the potential issue is. For a long time, one thing that we've addressed in the corporate environment is that it gets very difficult for a corporate learning environment for the managers to monitor to maintain to maintain that their students that they've assigned or their their employees that they've assigned to certain learnings are actually achieving and doing what what is what is required and when they've actually completed it. This new reporting system helps to, to drive that forward and identify it um, and give you those tools as a corporate organization to drive it forward. Um, from that auditing as my account, and then of course getting in touch with us for any particular issues um, or um, any particular additions or increases to your accounts um, that you need to do. So this is a page that's specific to our corporate learners only. This helps to take it to the next level as a corporate tool, uh, bringing it forward for those to be able to um, understand all those, uh, the things that need to be tracked and learned within the environment. All right, so what we're gonna do now, I'm going to cut back to um, the slides here. We'll cover a few things. Um, that kind of summarizes a little bit. That's a real quick tour of the uh, AWP University Learning Management System. Brand new system, state of the art. We are extremely proud of it. Please go to the website. You can tour it, go through each of those pages. There is a vast amount of text 
a vast amount of explanation within each of these courses that you specifically know whether this is the one that's pointed to what you need to know or not. Um, go in and look at it, awpu-u.com, um, CCTE Global. Go in, take a look um, at the new website um, and, and look at our new offerings to see what you, what you think. Now, one thing that I wanna mention is our AWP scholarship program for 2023 was highly successful. Uh, we awarded it to three individuals. The mentors have been working with those students um, to get them moving forward. We are going to be bringing that scholarship program back for, for 2024. Um, stay tuned. Um, it will come available for sign up in April. Um, so please may, monitor and maintain if you've got uh, people in your organization or possibly yourself wants to apply for scholarship. Even if you've already taken several AWP um, university courses or maybe even completed a learning path or two, it's still a good idea to apply because getting another learning path um, under your belt for free by being awarded the scholarship, not to mention being able to be mentored by some of the key, most key individuals in the industry. Last year, um, it was Jay Mosier um, and, um, <coughs> excuse me, and um, several others, John Fish, as well as Jan Shoemate from Eastman, very, very famous names in AWP that are the mentors they're working with their students. Next year, we've got a star-studded cast, if you will, as far as AWP goes. Mr. Ted Blackman, probably the most prolific inventor of AWP technologies on the globe, um, has thrown his hat in the ring to be a mentor for, for a particular student. So if that student is directly towards the, the meat and potatoes of some of the technology aspects, Ted's going to be there to, to mentor those individuals. Deb McNeil from an AWP programmatic implementation point of view, uh, member of IPA, amazing lady, lover to death, known her forever. She's a very strong individual in the industry, has decided to, to also um, help us with those sponsorships. And then Jeff Ryan, probably a man who needs no um, introduction in the AWP environment. Jeff Ryan, the CEO of uh, AWP Insight, is also going to be available um, as uh, a mentor in the scholarships. So each student, each of the three students will be awarded the scholarship and one of these mentors. So please stay tuned for April. Um, it's going to be amazing um, to go through our, our second iteration of the scholarship program. They will be awarded at the AWP conference uh, coming in October of this year. All right, stay tuned for more information on that. Next thing, scan this. If you're interested and don't know where to get started, you wanna get started with us, this is a free course, free introductory offer, the AWP awareness, scan this QR code, it'll take you to the position, it's free. Once you sign into the system, once you add it to your cart and you purchase it for nothing, it'll, you're going through a purchasing process, but it'll be for $0. You'll get an email, at that, when you get that email, it'll, it'll tell you to, to create the credentials for your login and create your account, and in your account will be the AWP awareness waiting for you free of, court, free of charge. It is a certificate award, and a PDH award, meaning personal development units so, or personal development hours. So it'll go towards engineering credentials or PMP credentials um, moving forward with it. So free registration, it's a great tool to send through your organization for those that need to know how to spell AWP moving forward. Um, and we're offering it as a free promotion. So please scan there um, to go forward with that. All right, so with that, we're going to move to Q&A. Um, we've only got about five minutes left, so we're going to hit some quick questions. Um, looks like we've got a couple questions, both from a process point of view, as well as a, uh, a course curriculum point of view. So let's look at those courses. And Andre, if you want to turn your camera on and come back in, we'll answer these questions, if you will. Um, please feel free to add more questions. Um, we may go into to overtime, depending on, on how time goes. Um, with answering the questions, but we're not going to necessarily cut it off right at the hour um, if we've got a good flow of questions. So with that, scan code is on the screen here. Feel free to scan that and add further questions into the uh, the portal uh, for Andre and I to answer. So with that, we will jump into the first question. And with the first question, it says, if I took the older version of a course and received a certificate last year, can I access the new course materials on our new site. 
excellent question. Um, should have covered that during the presentation. All of the previous materials for the AWP University all line up to new materials. We ported all of the old students over into the new system. So if you were a previous student, you should have got an email um, saying that you now have the ability to go in and create a new login for the brand new portal because uh, the new site is now the old site is now offline. <coughs> Excuse me. Come in here. You will see in your profile that there are new courses assigned to you free of charge that matched up to what your certification you took before was. So at that point, you have one of two choices. If you took the older versions, you have a certificate in it that's still valid. You also have access to the newer updated materials. Within the university, you will always have access to materials as it moves forward, um, as long as you've been active within two years within the AWP University. You'll be able to continue to view the, the new modified and upgraded materials for that. So if you have not received that email or have not logged into the new system, if you're a student from the old system, please send an email to info, I-N-F-O, at awp-u.com um, requesting reactivation of your account or um, if there's a problem with uh, courses that you did take that are not showing up in the new form, um, we'll be happy to, to help you through that. We have customer service management uh, members that are there to, uh, to assist you through that. Just use the info at awp-u.com email and they can help if there's any issues. We've not had many issues. Um, we've effectively ported everybody over to, um, to credentials that are, and to new courses that match. Um, so go ahead, take those. If you want to get the new, newer certificates, because we did upgrade the look of the certificates as well, feel free to go through the new trainings and take them again. Um, they're, they're quicker, more to the point, refresh your knowledge, get your new certificates, all free of charge if you are a past completer of the AWP University uh, learning paths. Uh, very key. Uh, Andre, anything to, to add to our older students looking for their newer material? No, I think you covered it all. But I think the biggest thing is a lot of the new modules will have a lot of the new research material that's been released incorporated into it. So it's very good to, if you already signed up for it, kind of take the course again because there are, there are going to be new data points in there within the modules. Yeah, I think that's very key. With the new curriculum, there's a lot of updates to the materials. Just to give a, a brief, probably on the tip of the tongue, um, uh, example of that would be there was a research paper, RT364, that, that was released um, two years ago now, a year and a half ago now, um, that included the, the development of SWPs, system work packages. Um, our materials have all been all updated to, to match the, the intermittent package or the intermediate package of the SWP now. Um, that's just one um, example. We continue, as Andre mentioned earlier um, in the presentation, we work very, very closely with CII um, to ensure that any new developments get into our materials and, and vice versa so that we assist them in the development of the methodologies moving forward as well. So stay tuned. If there's materials, anything that changed, review the materials um, and uh, get your new certificates and, and look at the new courses, as Andre said, because there's, there is new learnings in there. Um, it's great if you, to move forward. Um, if not, that's fine. Your credentials are still active and your certificates are still valid. Um, if you want to look at the newer versions and it's not in there, but you did take it, like I said, email us and we'll, we'll rectify the situation for you. Okay. Let's uh, look at a couple other questions here um, that I think are pretty interesting questions um, as we get into the final couple minutes here. What is the indicator to release the CWP? If it is EWPs, is it like after 70% of the ISC drawings for the particular CWP have been released? Um, the key to that is when we're looking at the release of the CWP, we do look at the CWP individually for its completeness and its issuance through the CWP release program. Um, we have a course on CWP release review meetings and what needs to happen during those, including creating CWP release forms and how you monitor the release of those CWPs. And when we say the release of the CWP, really the CWP is 
in essence, a contractual deliverable between um, the engineering um, group and the contractor. Because um, the CWP is the executable document, often that the owner requires you to, to um, progress against. It's kind of the central hub to everything AWP. And the other packages are in play to, to satisfy the requirements of the CWP, including the IWP, which is the execution arm of the CWP. So the question here, if EWPs is at like 70% of the IFC drawings, then you release the CWP. CWP should only be released when they're at a 100% IFC level to, for actual execution. There are exceptions based on schedule and, and certain other requirements that you may see those types of things. The goal is always 100% of that CWP information prior to release of the CWP during the release process. Now, EWPs may couple, cover a couple CWPs. So an EWP might be 70% complete, but one of the CWPs attached to it may be 100% within that, C, that 70%. So it's less about the, the amount complete of the C, EWP and the correct items complete within the EWP to satisfy a specific CWP during that release process. Um, so I hope that's clear. Andre, do you want to add anything there? Yeah, uh, the only thing, don't think these exceptions that you mentioned would be considering if it's that EWPs are 80%, 90%, but you know that 10, 20% is major, a long lead item, major piece of equipment, and you're trying to follow the path of construction and adhere to that schedule based um, execution, then you can release it potentially around the lower 80, 90%, just knowing the wherewithal and auditing your data to make sure that that one EWP that has not been released is going to be a long lead item, but you kind of want to get ahead and install it later. That would be one of the only exceptions I can really think of when it comes to larger scale projects. Excellent, excellent example of that. That's that's very true. There, there's certain, and that's kind of what I meant by by schedule. You just um, articulated it much better. And by schedule, I mean that 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 equipment is scheduled. It's coming down the highway. It's going to be here at that particular time. So we may release this because according to schedule, it will be there. There isn't a hold. So ta there's a difference between soft release and hard release. When we say a soft release, that means that according to schedule, and as Andre said, everything should be there. We don't see any potential holds or issues. So the CWP may be released in a soft release point of view because it, it may not be all IFC, but it's supposed to be. And materials are all supposed to be there by that time. There are several indicators in there that are covered within the IWP or the CWP release review process, which is key to controlling this. Because it's not just one simple thing of it's 100 percent or not there's there's a, a whole review process to go through on that all right the next thing next question would be how do we control modular type at cwp and iwp level um a done by the epc epcc contractor b if every disciplines are different subcontractors <clears throat> so modular type um some little conf let's break down the question um, if we're talking about a modular program and we're controlling modules at the CWP and IWP level, there's two different things when it comes to modularization that we need to look at um, from the CWP and IWP implementation point of view. One is the actual manufacturing development of the module itself utilizing packages and AWP process. So, for instance, Hyundai in the port creating a major module um, for delivery by barge the implementation and creation of that module in the port on that barge um, would be, could utilize the AWP processes. And in order to do that, usually what we do is the entire module is a CWA, CWPs are discipline specific within that module extent, and IWPs are the execution of the building of that module within the location. The second part of that to control is then the actual setting, leveling, and and completion of that module as well as the connect points for that module on site. So after shipment to site, there's an IWP that needs to be created and there's CWPs associated with the actual installation setting, leveling and connect points of that. There may be, depending on the size of a module, anywhere from like one to 4,000 inter between modules that need to be conducted and put onto multiple IWPs for the actual installation of that module. So first one's the actual manufacturing of the module. Second methodology is the actual uh, in inclusion of the module and actual um, installation of the module within the actual project and how you control those. 
So when we say module type and is it done by an EPC or EPC contractor or every disciplines are subcontractors, regardless of where that's being implemented, remember the basis of an IWP, an IWP, we always have a three point mantra when it comes to an IWP, right? For a single crew, very key, never multiple crew, single crew, saturation of time, start to stop without finish. Whenever you think of an IWP, think of those three things, and that'll kind of make it clearer to you as to who needs to authorize each of those aspects of installation, whether it's an, on a module, it's the setting of a module, it's the creation of a module, or where it's being put in. So just on that first point where we said single crew, that means that it's within a single subcontractor. Whether there's multiple different contractors or call it across multiple different trades, it really doesn't matter at that point because an IWP will be specific to a crew and a CWP should be specific to a contractor. CWPs by rights never cross the boundaries of contracting. A CWP will be multiple CWPs or a single CWP will comprise of a, of a contract. Now, subcontractors can be different because you could have multiple subcontractors working under one contractor that had a CWP, but those subcontractors are now working at the IWP level. Remember that, that first point of a single crew for a set duration of time start to stop without finish. So I danced around the direct answering of that question by giving some other additional information, but I hope that kind of makes it clear as to how you would consider modularization in an AWP program you have to consider it from two different points, which is the manufacturing and the setting. And in that, there's multiple tasks, both from a CWP and an IWP point of view that need to be scheduled and assigned to multiple crews and contractors. Andre, did I cover it? Yeah, covered that, I know that one in the hood. All right, excellent. So with that, we are over time. I apologize. I always tend to uh, like to continue to uh, to speak and, and go through multiple questions. We've got a few more questions that are in the kitty, but um, for the sake of uh, being closer to time, uh, we'll uh, end the, the uh, webinar here. I thank you all for, for coming. We are going to, uh, um, let me come back to our presentation here. There is a final thing in the, um, in the app for Slido to scan the app. There's a quick survey question there. Um, would you like us to contact you about training? Please include your name and email. Um, if you want us to, to uh, contact you about some of the stuff that you witnessed here today, you're interested in a corporate program for your organization or training for yourselves, please feel free to, to reach out um, here and we'll get back to you. Or um, if you don't reach out here, info at awp-u.com um, is the direct email box that comes to our administrators. Uh, for that. So with that, I thank you very much. I hope you found um, the release of our new curriculum and our new web, website and LMS system um, interesting. I hope that you go in now and look, because I gave you the real high level, go in and look at all the new tools, all the new toys, the new learning environment. It is simply the most state-of-the-art um, AWP learning environment in the industry. We are extremely proud of it. Um, we have taken the best of breed from multiple different learning systems, worked with a contractor to develop it. Um, it is ours. We own it. It's proprietary. Um, I think it's amazing. Um, and I'm proud to, sh to share it with you all. So please go have a further look at your own pace at the website. And uh, if you've got any questions, you can either, as, as I said, launch here to ask us, to ask us further questions or um, contact us through here to have us contact you or info at awpu.com. I'm Robin, I was Andre, um, and we thank you very much for joining us and uh, please take care and be safe. Thank you for watching. For more information, visit our website at ccteglobal.com.